We gon' talk real facts, ayy. Know you can kill that. We the ones bringing the skill back. Know you can feel that. Know you've been waiting on someone to bring you the real back. Party time, party time, excellent. Turn it up, we turn to up. Never late, don't mistake us for no other bush. Show what up, dog? <laughs> oh, what's the deal? First to Let's the get party it, nation. It's your boy Breeze, man. What's the Kool Aid, man? What's the deal? <laughs> Man, it's been a little minute. Let's Hell yeah, we hot, we hot and thick, man. These NBA playoffs is live, man. We got a big game tonight. We got yeah. your New York Knicks, man. Yeah, they hosting man. Atlanta Hawks tonight, man. Ooh. We got some back up uh, hey, back big against games. the wall, brother. Our back against the wall right now. What y'all gonna uh, do, man? Y'all been you been hearing the shit that uh, Capella been talking? Oh, big shit. Big shit for Capella been talking. My man Derrick Rose say, man, I've been doing, I'm 32 years old. I ain't been talking shit. I ain't about to start now. You feel me? But he just mad. We was trying to bring back the old Knicks. Be the bully on the block. Hey, man, respect to Trey Young, though. That young that young man ridiculous, man. Ice Trey. Hey, man, that boy is hard to stop, man. Let me ask you a question, Breeze. If uh I got this, I got this ending tonight. I got, I got, I got Atlanta closing them out tonight. Um Say for instance, the Knicks do lose tonight. How you how you view this uh season? Man, I'm glad you asked that. Since I am a diehard Knicks fan, a faithful, um, I view this as a win. We wasn't supposed to be in this situation yet. No. Uh we got a Thibodeau, uh, was just an outstanding coach. I've always loved Tibbs. Tibbs finally understood how to uh let the offense be the offense, and then he controls the defense. He made a pact with the team at the beginning of the training camp. If y'all play defense hard. I won't hog down the ball. I will let you guys free flow. You can shoot the three. You can be young. You can run. Uh, but to answer your question, man, hey, I'm, I'm excited about the Knicks' future. And if we lose tonight, we lose tonight. Uh, but we did make it to the playoffs, and we got a victory, and that's more than what we did in years. So I'm excited about our future, man. We really need another score and a superstar. If we lose tonight, I'm proud of the season that we got, man. It is what it is. Good season in my eyes, man. Like I, like you said, I'm going to piggyback off what you said. Uh, Knicks wasn't expected to be here this year. You know, uh, New York basketball is back, man. It's been a while, man. James Dolan been fucking the franchise up for a couple years now. But uh, uh, Wild Wild West over there, uh, you know, LeBron got some hands over there. Some people over there, man, some big names over there. And uh, they changing some shit up over in New York. And I think the future is good. Uh, Julius Randle. Um, I know Atlanta been chanting overrated. Uh, a lot of people have been saying he is overrated, but I think that he's uh, had a hell of an offseason. He added to his game. Um, and I think this is just going to be another layer in his uh, development. Um, I don't really Rose. think he's overrated. I think he gassed, man. He gassed himself yeah, out, man. They, they, he the carried him by doing, himself, man. He's been doing it yeah, all year, He was man. doing three days this summer, you know. That take a toll on your body, but he did get yeah. better. His jump shot got tremendously better. Uh, but you know what, man? Hey, he gassed, man. You know, that's really what it is. He gassed, and we and we need more offense. Um, yeah. I think that is. second unit is uh is uh failing with Rose starting. Uh, I think uh, <clears throat> that was probably the strength of the team, uh, especially uh, as far as offense. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Rose, Quickly, Burks, Toppin, those guys came off the bench with energy. And they uh, either elevated the lead or brought them back from where the deficit they was from Randall and company, you know, starting off. So uh, I think Rose is tailor made for the bench, and they just need that other score until RJ gets, you know, what I'm saying fully developed mm-hmm. to be that one-two punch over there in the beginning. But uh, I love the, I like what the Knicks been doing. Um, Atlanta, them boys are deep, man. I give me a uh, Golden State vibes, man. It's unique what they've done. Uh, Adding, adding to Trey Young's strengths, they put pieces around him that have the same strengths that he has: uh, shooting the ball or scoring. Bogdanovich, Gallinari, those guys can are flat out snipers. Lou Williams can get sniping when he wants. He can score. Um, Kevin uh, Hyder, you know, what I'm saying he's a uh, he's a good shooter. You know, what I'm saying they still ain't got Cam Reddish on the floor yet, so they red keep velvet. young, young Kevin pieces. Hard, and they keep red them <laughs> Red Velvet. Yeah, man. Red Velvet, yes, that's what they call him, man, because the jumper's so smooth. Uh, if people been following us like they should be on Facebook, our Facebook page, First of the Party with the explanation point, uh, you will know that Lex and I have been calling uh, Atlanta the Golden State of the East for a very long time. That's what they are, man. They built a team to try to be like them. They are not as good as them, um, but they're trying to make an identity for themselves. And, and so far, uh, it's working. One more thing before I move on to Atlanta from the Knicks. Um, 
the one thing the one thing that about the Knicks, if you look at us over the last 12 years, we haven't had a dynamic point guard. You have to have a dynamic point guard in this league, just like in the NFL, you have to have a dynamic quarterback to be successful. We don't have that in New York. We don't have the floor leader that can go get you 40 or a floor leader that can make sure that I can get you a 15 and, and, and 15 assists or 10 assists. So the Knicks need to figure out what they need to do as far as in that backcourt. RJ is good, in my opinion. Julius is good. We got Mitchell Robinson, the second off. He was the second uh, leader in rebound before he got hurt behind Andre Drummond. He was out for the entire year. He's coming back. So there's Shot a lot blocker. of upside. A lot of upside. But Atlanta, um, I don't like Atlanta at this moment. But overall, hey, man, I really like their team, man. I love Trey Young. Uh, like you said, Kevin Herter. And uh, you're right, Cam Reddish is not on the court. And that's another shooter. He daily, that's a, he just a flat-out weapon, man. The guy yeah. had a professional jump shot even in college. Some people say high school. So, uh, you know, and then Clint Capella give them that grittiness that they need. Um, Bo, what is his name? Bogdanovich? That Ogie. motherfucker, man. Killer, bro. He gives me Ginobili vibes, bro. Ginobili vibes, bro. He is really, he explodes. Like, he explodes. He got heart. You got to remember in the offseason, he turned down Milwaukee. Said, I'm not going to Milwaukee. I'm going to Atlanta. The vision was there. You know what I'm saying? They had, you know, this team has been uh, uh, on my radar for a while now, man. You know, but uh, they did the right thing. I got rid of Lloyd Pierce. And they got a real coach in there, Nate McMillan. So, uh I, I love what they've been doing, man. Uh, I'm excited for the next round. I actually got them winning the next round and, and meeting the Nets in the Eastern Conference Finals. That's my bold prediction. Uh, Hawks, mm-hmm. Hawks, Nets. I don't think the New York Atlanta rivalry is over yet. This Atlanta New York rivalry go deep, man. It go it go from from hoop to hip hop. Like Atlanta's been wanting to be accepted in hip hop and all that shit. You can see it from Migos to Gucci on the sideline. You know what I'm saying? To the big names in New York to. Uh, 50 Cent, you know what I'm saying, and, and Spike, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. So uh, it's right. it's big, man. I, I think um, I'm happy for both uh, f- uh, franchises in their future. And um, let's go to the yeah. other team, uh, other game, man. We got um, Philly tonight against Washington, bro. Uh, Embiid out, slight meniscus tear. It looked like, oh, so so is his knee in his ass? Because <laughs> he fell and bust his ass. Let's yeah, just keep. He fell on his ass. And I don't know who more injury prone between MB, Chris Paul, and Anthony Davis. Chris These Paul. three people, they, they can't stay healthy. MB had a legitimate MVP year, obviously was going crazy against Washington. No one can stop him, right? And then all of a sudden, now you got a torn meniscus. I don't care how good you are as a player, man. The most irritating thing that possibly could happen is you not being available on the court. Everybody want to talk about these abilities, abilities. Bro, the best ability is availability. You're not available to play in the playoffs, though. And guess what? You just gave the killer Brad Bill and Brody all the the ammunition they need. They like, shit, we can go do it now. We can do it now. It's over, man. You know? It's over. Man. That's crazy. And I've all and I said it at the beginning. I said I, I said it. Episode two, episode three. Listen, I want to see Washington in the playoffs. And I was looking real wrong. Oh, but I'm looking okay now. <laughs> I'm looking all right now, man. Hey, I'm gonna tell you like this. Them boys going home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Philadelphia hey, been man. playing without NB for a fucking half of the season. You know, he was missing right. games due to the you know low management. Um, they was the guy that was dominating the first beginning of the game was Ben Simmons, Like he was going nuts. It was really him that jumped out to that lead on on them. And then when he got in foul trouble and then B got hurt at the end of the first quarter, that's when Philly got uh, Washington got back in the game. But I think this is tailor made and built for Ben Simmons to have a game. It's time for him to show his work. Now everybody knows about the defensive ability, but I think it's time for him to strike fear in motherfuckers heart. Uh, he's on that Giannis type level with me. I look at Ben Simmons and Giannis, damn near is the same player with slight edge given to Ben Simmons in my eyes because he knows his strengths. He knows his weaknesses. He's not settling for three-pointers. He's not settling for those long twos. He's getting in the paint. He's setting up guys. When he plays without Embiid, it's a totally different game. You got to remember uh, the year that um, they made the playoffs without Embiid. And B was hurt mm-hmm. or whatever. Or I think it was the year they played Miami or something like that. He was going nuts. He was at like 30 a couple games. If I'm yeah, he was mistaken. doing his thing. You know what I'm saying? Then you got to turn back the clock to this year. Uh, they just got a lot of weapons, man. George Hill, they go spread the floor out. You might see him play some center today. 
Uh, he could play one through five. It's just time to him to show his show his uh, show his value. I don't see them getting past Atlanta in the next round, but uh, I think they can take get, care of business. To 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 answer to to kind of rebuttal what you said, I give my slight edge to Giannis, and the reason why I would give my slight edge to Giannis is because he actually can shoot the ball better than Ben Simmons from three. I've seen Giannis make three threes in a game, and when he does make them, it makes his game that much better. Ben Simmons won't even attempt the three point shot. And you could say I'm, I'm, I'm playing to my strengths, but at the same time, be honest, is like, hey, they giving me this. I'm working on it. I'm going to show that I got confidence in my game. I'm always looking for the confident player, um, especially in the playoffs. I'm looking for somebody who's been working on their game all summer, all during the season. And then when the playoff time is when you get to put forth uh, and, and show that work that you put in. I love Ben Simmons as a, as a basketball player. I do think he's a better defender than Giannis. Um, mm-hmm. I think Giannis got more hype. You know, uh, you know, with the whole MVP and, and, and all of that, both Man. of them need to get a little bit better with their skill because Ben Simmons is a better passer. He is a better defender. I do believe that Giannis is a, I think I think Giannis is an actual uh, I think Giannis is a better rebounder. Um, I do think Giannis is a better scorer at this moment because he can hit some shots. It might not be consistent, but Ben Simmons won't even take the shot. So if I, I had th- to I, take I like him right being, now, I would. I, I mean, I just think being his I think he might be the smarter player. He's not gonna shoot you out of a game, shoot some shots that you know he shoot a low percentage shot. Right. But we've seen Giannis have those games where he always oh, made three threes. Those are the games where they roll, where he's hitting them and oh, they won. Oh, you got this. Like you said, mm-hmm. the defense is giving them shots for a reason. But we've also yeah. seen them games where he's 0 for three. And we're looking like, bro, stop shooting that shit. It ain't falling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It ain't falling. Ben Simmons right. has been handicapped a bit because um this team hasn't really been built around him. No, it's strength. built around Joel. Do- it's Doc built around Joel. So I'm building it around Joel, which yeah, I so, think he should as well. And I think that uh, Philadelphia and the management may be thinking a little different now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what I'm this saying. This is a couple playoffs here in a row, man. A couple playoffs where Embiid has not been available. You know what I'm saying? And they was first in the East, and they had a shot, man. If he was healthy, man, we, we don't know what happened. But uh, right. like I said, hopefully, hopefully Ben can get it done and get him to the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, but I think they both lose because uh, the Nets. You seen what they just did in Boston? Y'all fans and, and get would, the water water bottles y'all want. <laughs> I, I'm gonna say this too: the the the, the Boston series was a it, it it was a more of a handicap series, and I and I, I enjoyed it though. Um, one because you get to see the raw Jason Tatum. The survival, Jason Tatum, the the the, the animal instinct. I, I'm just a killer. I understand that we're going to lose, but I am a killer, and I'm going to put my talents on display. And, and, and for me, that was a joy. I enjoyed that 50 ball. Oh, my God. Joy. And, I, and I've always been a big fan of Jason Tatum. That was impressive. But I believe it would have been more competitive if they were healthy, if Kimba was healthy and playing in his right mind, if Jalen Brown was there. You know what I'm saying? If Marcus Smart was fully healthy. So um, I, I, I want to see Boston. I want to see Boston back next next year um but even if they were full they were at full health they were they weren't beating the nets i didn't ain't no way in the hell i had them beating them boys um you see what happened Kyrie had one off game and then he come right back and turn that motherfucker on um, you gotta look at this series man how honestly, it played out crazy. man how this series played out the first game the nets struggled out the gate and they still end up winning by 11 they come back game two uh they get a big double digit win i think it was probably about uh 15, something like that. They win that game. Then they come back and they go home where Tatum uh, – actually, no, they go to Boston where Tatum uh, goes so nuts with 50 ball and Kyrie struggling. Um, that's 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 like the sun shining on a dog's ass. But, I mean, motherfucker drop 50, they, they got to win. They're supposed to win. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and once again, we caught that too on one of our episodes. We both said that it would be a gentleman's sweep. So yeah. four to one. You know, yeah. so we I kind of figured that because Jason Tatum is so high power, we kind of figured that he would be able to at least pull one out there. And then that Boston crowd, man, the Boston faithful is some of the most legendary fans in the game of basketball. They're going to make it tough on you. I don't care how strong minded you are, how much of a killer instinct you are. When you go to the garden, you're going to play Boston and their fans. You know what and I'm we saying? Got, so I, I looked at it was a lot of pluses out of this uh, series. A lot of a lot of good positive storylines. Uh, Boston's future kind of looks good. They seen that they got a superstar in Tatum. We both we all knew this Tatum was a superstar, but he de- he solidified that shit with this performance against the Nets. They couldn't stop That's him dead. at all. They couldn't guard him. Uh, just by you knowing that Kimball wasn't healthy and Jalen Brown wasn't on the floor, that has to make you feel good about Boston too. Um, 
Uh, another thing, another plus is for the Nets, uh, James Harden, best player in the league. Um, to me, best player in the league because of the simple fact that uh, he has the ability to go get his whenever. He has the IQ to get to the line. He uses the rules to his advantage, and he makes everybody around him better. Uh, I think he's finally better. getting in the shape. He's getting in the shape. You got to remember, he, he missed games. And earlier in the season, that uh, he got off to a rocky start with Houston, so he didn't really work out with them. So I think he's in shape now. I think his game is taking off to another level. And I just that just moves the Nets to another level. The um, thing that be the thing that killed me about all the James Harden haters. I've I've always James Harden, my favorite player in the league right now. It's really mm-hmm. split between him and Dame Lillard. Uh, but James Harden, the thing that killed me about the haters is that they always want to talk about he in shape. Everybody not going to look like LeBron James. Everybody mm-hmm. not going to have a body like Michael Jordan. That's his body. And my thing is, is if he, he was not in shape, still dropping 30 and 40 points, like that, that makes me nervous. So if you're trying to tell me this, this guy not in shape, you're making all these funny jokes and he's still dropping triple doubles during the regular season. OK, well, let's happen. What happens when he get in shape? Well, what will happen then? I mean, a guy, an animal, man, and I don't care. People, some people hate him, some people love him. I love him, man. Like you said, the IQ, he make the work, the uh, rules work to his advantage. If the NBA and the, the fans and everybody was so upset about the rules, talk to the commissioner, talk to the referee, tell him to call the game differently. And I'm Which sure he's going to adjust to that too, because the kid's strong. He could mm-hmm. play bully ball too. At, at point guard, what point guard guard him? He can put you on the block. I mean, he a grown man, so uh, I don't know. I don't pay attention to James Harden haters, man. They're going to say what they're going to say, and the boy going to continue to ball. Um, but that Nets team, I, I like them. I like them, man. They're ridiculous. I just don't want them to beat the Knicks, but I like them. <laughs> hey, man, that <laughs> Nets team, man, they can play so many different styles. They showed this series they can play small ball. They matched up with Boston really good. Seeing that they had a 6'9 center and Tristan Thompson in there, they threw Blake Griffin in the uh, star lineup. Keeps the uh, floor, uh, floor spacing open because Blake – is capable of knocking down an open shot. Uh, and um, it's, been, it's been showing it's been showing uh, some dividends, but I expect to see DeAndre Jordan and a lot of Nicholas Clax the next series. Uh, the uh, the Celtics, bro, Danny Ainge out of there. Yeah, Danny Ainge said he's stepping down. I didn't really get a chance. I've been trying to catch, like, exactly why he's stepping down. Danny Ainge did a good job. He brung a Marine. He made some free agency. The thing that the knock on Danny Ainge was he was, a, he was afraid to make the big trade to go after the big free agency because he's been in some, some, he's always been in talks, never came out with the guy that you wanted him to get in mm-hmm. free agency. I guess that's a knock against him. Um, I, I think he, I, me personally, I think he's stepping down due to the stress of the job. Um, that's where I really, I think he's stepping down, man. The Boston faithful are very hard people to please. It's always championship of bus, man. When you come, when you talk about the Celtics and you're talking about the Los Angeles Lakers, that's title town, man. Them two, they, them two hold the most rings in the NBA. So if you're not winning it for them two franchises, the fans going to get on your ass. You know, you've seen Snoop Dogg, how he was talking about the Lakers the other night, which was well-deserved, and we'll get to that. But yeah. the Boston faithful hard to prove, hard to uh, make happy. And I think that's why Danny Ainge is stepping down due to stress, to be completely honest. Uh, I think it's I think it's due to, like you said, stress. I think it's due to, uh, they had a plan of motion. I think the more stressed person is... Uh, uh, the head coach, um, Brad, Brad Stevens, he's moving up. It was a report coming out that he was just overwhelmed and uh, burnt out by the bubble season last year. That bubble in the playoffs, that wore him out. Then transitioning back to rec, you know, he just was burnt out. He's been doing a lot that of this turnaround shit. Turnaround time, man. That yeah, turnaround he's been doing a lot vicious. of this shit since uh, college. Remember, he was a college mm-hmm. coach, and that's a lot of recruiting right. doing there. So I think he's just ready to. Uh, uh, he's a smart mind. But he he may not be able to get that that message. You feel me? He's an X's and O's type guy, smart as right. shit. But as uh, shit, personal, right. you know, getting his, getting the team and and talking to him, I don't think he got that. So I think he's gonna uh, use that. He knows he knows that team. He knows the players. You know, he's been coaching them players. So uh, all the players they got on his bad side and arguments. Marcus Smart, a little hammerhead ass, is out of here. I can see him being mm-hmm. traded. Uh, but uh, I think it's a good move for Boston. You know, get younger, get a new coach, a new voice in there. And uh, I'm excited about their future. Uh, what about this Lakers Sun series, bro? What's going on in L.A. time? I had, uh, I had the Lakers winning. Uh, I believe I had them winning in six. Uh, y'all can let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. But I think I had them in six. Um, but, I mean, with shit, with flimsy-ass A.D., you thump A.D., you breathe on A.D. too hard, man, mm-hmm. and his ass going down. 
I think without AD, man, the Suns really got a chance. You know, Chris Paul had tears in his eyes yesterday just from all the things that he'd been through, man, through his entire career. And I think he finally think that he can get it done. Um, I'm, I'm pulling for the Suns, man. I do my best to try to pull for the uh, for the underdog. Uh, I know you feel the same way. You try to pull for the underdog as well, too. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, I really don't know. I don't even have a prediction for this particular uh, series anymore. Just for the simple fact that, man, I don't know what AD doing. It's just too many unknown factors for me to be like, this is what's going to happen. I'm just going to have to sit back and enjoy this one. Um, I, I really don't know. I got the Lakers in seven. I had the Lakers in five at first mm -hmm. before the AD injury. I seen the first game and I told you, you know, LeBron likes to have uh, fill out games. He always loses sure. the first game. And sure. they came back in the game two and they got a big win. They came back game three in L.A., and they got a dog-ass win, a nice, you know, double digit. And you start seeing the Lakers start get comfortable, getting that swagger, LeBron jawing with uh, Crowder and laughing and smiling and tearing his ass up, fans back in the building. They had supreme confidence. Uh, they started off game four the same way. They were toying with uh, with the Suns. Uh, LeBron was living in the paint. Uh, fast forward to AD going down with the injury. Uh that gave them a game. That gave that finished that game out. And I think uh, last night I was expecting the Lakers to win. I was expecting LeBron to turn back the clock and reminding everybody who who the king was, and sure. you know who who could have been the best player in the league. Um, but they, like Snoop said, they played with no heart, no sense of urgency. Uh, they played entitled. They played like it was just gonna come to them. Uh, and I think that uh, LeBron and them gonna come back focused. A report came out today that AD says he wants to play Game Six. They gonna be at home. I think at home, I expect the Lakers, their favorite right now on the betting sites, uh, they favored it. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, AD probably plays uh, and the Lakers pull out a win. And then we go to game seven Saturday night. You got a big Saturday. So uh, the uh, second round of playoffs in the East start. And I think Saturday night you get the Lakers and you get uh, the Suns in prime time right before Floyd come on. So uh uh, one thing that I want to, one thing that I do want to mention, though, uh, I want to talk about Devin Booker. Devin Booker worked with Kobe, and you can always see who has worked with Kobe and who really got that Mamba mentality. Everybody like to talk about the Mamba mentality, but you can actually see it. You get a certain player, Jason Tatum, and the reason why I want to talk about Jason Tatum too, because my thing is this: my homeboys is out in the soft ass generation that we're in right now. The mentally soft generation that we're in right now. He could have easily said Jalen Brown hurt. Uh, Kimba not playing good. Kimba hurt. My boys is out. Let me just get my average. Let me get my 20 points. Let me get my 25 points. Let me go let them dogs. And I'm going to go drop 50. I'm going to go really try to win. Same with Devin Booker. Devin Booker, well, uh, along with that pit bull, Chris, ball, Chris Paul. And then look how Chris Paul talks to DeAndre Aiden. It's no soft talk. What the fuck are you doing? Get your big ass down there. He being a point guard. And DeAndre Aiden is actually up in his game. I looked at the other night, man. I'm thinking, I'm looking at DeAndre eight numbers. Dog has 16.17 rebounds. The quietest 16, 17 I've ever seen. But he's a value piece of that team, man. And, 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 and my thing is this, bro. You cannot, the Lakers got to come and just take care of business. LeBron, you have to come and assert yourself. All that trying to make the right play shit, only getting off 19 shots. Dog, you're supposed to put up 30 shots, bro. Put you're your supposed head to put down. Up 30 shots. And put your head down. And my thing is this. I think, I don't know if it's going to go six or seven. I'm not for sure. I'm hoping that Phoenix can come out and just dog their ass tonight and get it over with. That's what I'm hoping. Probably not going to happen. But that's what I'm looking forward to. I want Phoenix to come out and make a statement. I want Devin Booker to come out and be like, look, I'm here. I'm the best player here. And I want to talk about game three, too. Uh, what was it? Game four that uh, AD got hurt? Game three or game four? Which was it? Game four. Okay. Game four got hurt. If you look at game four, AD get hurt. Right after that, watch Devin Booker. Go back and watch Devin Booker. He turned it on. And I told my girl, I'm, I'm sitting there with my wife. I tell my wife, I said, listen, that's why he get paid the big bucks. Because it's the fourth quarter, it's four minutes to go, and he started making plays. Mm -hmm. He started to keep, I, oh, y'all hurt. Your best player now. I don't give a damn. I'm about to go for the killer instinct. I'm going for the neck. And that's the generation that we grew up in with the Iversons and, and, and uh, Tracy McGrady's and the Kobe's. You know what I'm saying? Like they were had killer instinct. And I just like I like that about Devin Booker. And I like that about this young Phoenix team. And they're not afraid. They're not afraid of the, the, the bright lights, the palm trees, the showtime. They're not afraid. They coming in there. They coming to work. So it's a it's a very good first round, man. It's a very good first round. And I'm enjoying it. Yeah, piggyback off the Aiden. Uh, I think Aiden's uh, success is all by design. Uh, the Lakers are trapping off the top. 
They're giving him everything down there. If you look at it, I think he's been shooting like seven or eight for every game. But he's getting a lot of dump offs, and they did dive into Devin Booker. And they're giving Chris Paul every shot he want to take. Uh, the last, the first two games, Devin Booker um, was hot. Uh, game three and four, they kept him under 20. They kept him under 20, and that was the adjustment. Go ahead, Chris Paul, you shoot. Hey, Aiden, go ahead, go for what you know. They've been giving Aiden everything down low, and they've been trying to collapse up top, not giving them nothing. Um, the Lakers, if you just subtract Chris Paul, the Suns are our young team. They were right. good at the bubble, you know what I'm saying? But if you and subtract Crowder Chris too. Paul, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Crowder and Chris Paul, because Crowder just brings a young the team. presidents as well. Yeah. So that's when you see the games where Crowder's not successful and Chris Paul struggling. They 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 look outmatched. I think game seven, you'll see a pissed off LeBron James in front of the Lakers staple, uh, Lakers crowd. And they go go after they go go out there and get the dub. Then it's game seven. It's game seven. You know what I'm saying? And I think the Lakers, like I said, the Lakers lose here. Who really has a shot to beat uh the Nets out west? I mean, out in the West, you know what I'm saying? Utah. I think it's going to be Utah Lakers in the Eastern Conference, I mean, Western Conference Finals. And uh, and then we go get our uh, Nets Lakers in the Finals. They go give us the matchup that we want and the matchup that we deserve. But uh, not worry about the Lakers. Uh, Space Jam coming out this summer. Uh, <laughs> Laker Nation, baby. Laker that's Nation. Why, that's where we go. That's, that's how they go get it done, man. Hey man, but the other LA team, be worried, man. Right? That's why you need to be worried. They about to go on a pro. LeBron said, "Forget the playoffs. He's going on a promo tour, man." He said he'd be back next year. He going to promo take tour his, for Space Jam. He gonna take his promo <laughs> tour through Denver, and he gonna take it through Utah. <laughs> <laughs> he going through the altitude, baby. Hey, and I'm gonna tell you they, something too, man. Denver, Denver is a team uh, that that's very scary, man. Um, people lucky Jamal Murray hurt, man. <laughs> They lucky Jamal Murray hurt, man. I'm serious, man. You got that guy Joker. Uh, you got Michael Porter. He's scoring 26, bro. Like, hey, man, he, him, and then you bring in Jamal uh, Murray, and then they got my, my cousin Will Barton over there, you know? <laughs> hey, man. And he could do it well, man. Yeah, chill will, man. And, uh, hey, man, they lucky, man. The, the, that Denver team is, that Denver team, I like that team. They're special, man. Hey, but, but damn, God. Denver, that's my guy. Dame Dollar Ooh, last what night. What a performance, God, man. Damn, man. Bro, hey, did you see Austin Rivers? Points. You see Austin Rivers yeah. after he missed that last shot? He said, thank God. Thank God. Because <laughs> this man filling us up. Bro, first of all, it was the most efficient and fun 55 points that I've seen in a very long time, bro. 55 points, right? 12 from 17 from the field. 12 from 17 from the field, bro. And you they, yeah. you, 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 you they main option. And then when you look at the box score, that's the problem. You had Jokic had 38, but then you had 26 for Michael Carter. Then you had 28 off the bench for Monty Morris. You go on their side, you got 55 from Dame and 18 from C.J. McCollum. What the fuck? Melo had eight points. He shot three from nine from the field. Listen, man. Hey, you got to look at the first half, bro. They was down like 20. Before halftime, they was down 20, and, they, and I think they started like a 17-3 run, which was Dame by itself. Game right. ended the first quarter with like 25 or something like that. I mean, yeah. first half with like 25 or something like that. And they ended the first half 63 60. And then it just kept coming on, man. Uh, overtime after overtime. But it was big shot after big shot from Dame. Buzzer beater after buzzer beater right before the end of the quarter, end of the half. Uh, Dame Lillard just been amazing, man. But it's, it's some of these duos is just ready to be done, man. And I think that him and CJ has That's ran his up. course. They need some. Uh, they need some size in the backcourt. It can't be them man. two back there because defensively it's, 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 it's hurting them, man. You need to take some pressure off Dame and put another uh, superstar back there, somebody else that can guard. So I think it's time to uh, go get a defensive player that can score back there in a the two guard and move CJ somewhere else. Uh, Denver, Jokic, MVP. He the MVP, man. He moving the basketball. He's scoring at will against Yo uh, uh, Nurkic. But they don't have a body that can stop him. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. I, I, waking up. I ain't gonna lie, I'm still giving the MVP to Steph, but but go ahead. Bro. Hey, <laughs> I know, I know because of the record. I know people gonna try to kill yeah. me in the comments for the record, man. But shh, come on, man. The shit that Steph was doing, bro, without Clay, without his running mates, people going down. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna tell you this too. It ain't even that Dame need Dame need to leave. Let me tell you, bro. Imagine if Dame. Imagine if Dame was was with with, with Kawhi right now. If Dame was with Milwaukee, go ahead and move Drew Holiday. Let come on, man. 
That's what yeah. Milwaukee always been missing, a dynamic point guard, man. And that's, that's what I'm saying. And then if they go out east, bro, that's the thing, too. Lead the west, man. Go out east. It's going to get bad. It could get bad, man. And like I said, though, man, uh, if Dame was to go somewhere like Milwaukee, which I know damn well that ain't where he want to go, but I'm just saying you got somebody like Giannis with that team around you. And Giannis, that take the pressure off you. You allow Dame to do Dame time. You allow Dame to do Dame things in the fourth. Yeah. And he's the type of player that Giannis need, low-key. Because uh, uh, they – let's look at Giannis like he can't – he. He can't get his in a in a, in a half court, so uh, I like the, I like Dame. The rumors have been Dame in New York. I um, love Dame in New York. I don't think it's gonna happen though, but we'll take it. You hear me? I mean, I I've think Wild Wild, Wild West them got an influence. I think <laughs> what it comes down to, Dame has to uh, Dame has his KG and Paul Pierce type of mentality going on, where he uh, he don't want to. How can I put it? Uh, he don't want to be uh he want to be the he wants to be loyal. He want to be loyal. Too. So he want to be the loyal one. So uh when it comes to Dame, man, he just he he will have to force a trade and come up out of there. Hey, I want out. I want to be traded to one of these teams. James Harden type shit, man. But he has to make a decision on his career or he'll end up like Paul Pierce and KG, man. This is your prime years, man. This just hasn't happened in Portland, but bro. But if he end you up have like to KG look out Paul for Pierce, if he end up like them so he'll end up in the Hall of Fame with rings. So he might end up like Charles Barkley or somebody like that. A ring, but the, a ring, but they, but they got it though. Yeah, he, he, yeah. if if he stay in Portland, we all know his fate. He not gonna get it. He just yeah. not gonna get it, man. You, you know. And my thing is this too: if Denver was smart, man, trade Jamal Murray in a first round pick for Dame Lillard. See if you can't get him to come to Denver with Jokic, because Dame and Jokic, my man, woof, with that team that they got right now, man, that's they going to the Western Conference Finals, bro, and they gonna see whoever they need to see about it too. Well, they got the Lakers next. Opinion. They got Phoenix next. Uh, Phoenix or the Lakers? Uh, that's who uh, uh, Denver got next. I got Denver finishing this series out, but uh, then I got them in the Lakers, and it makes sense. You know, the Lakers are a little hobbled and banged up. They hobbled and banged up. So uh, rematch of the Eastern Western Conference Finals. I could see uh, uh, the Lakers going in there and, you know, cruising. Utah going to have to play the winner of uh, – what's that uh, – and listen, why in the fuck is Montrez Harold not getting no run? What is this? This man is a six man play. He's a six man of the year. See, they trying to match up with deep Phoenix. Over there. They're trying to match up with Phoenix. That's the issue. They're trying to match up with Phoenix instead of, I, I instead like of playing trade. bully ball and pounding. I didn't like that trade at all, bro. What we got next? I, I didn't like that though, man. You you, you should have went somewhere else, man. What the fuck? <laughs> uh what's the I other what's the other? Oh, the Clippers, the Clippers and the Mavericks, man. I think the Clippers turned them boys water off. And I think Kawhi and I was pissed off about this playoff P shit and Kawhi leaving. I think uh hell of a series. Way to come back, you know what I'm saying? Win two on a row against with all the pressure. All the marbles against you. Everybody on TV talking shit about you. Hell of a crazy by the Clippers. And I think they go in there and take care of business tonight. I think the Clippers hey, let me tell you something name. too, bro. In the comments, first of the party nation, hashtag cut your water off. You know, that's the saying. We've been saying that for years, man. And when cut somebody your cut off. your water off, you're going to die of thirst, man. You're going to be yes, thirsty. Sir. And what? And, 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 and you're right, man. They locked down. You know, my man got the, the neck injury. And I believe mm. it's a real injury, too, because let's just be honest. Before that injury, he was tearing their ass up. Yeah. <laughs> Luca was tearing their ass up. But you're mm -hmm. right, bro. They cut their water off, you know. And uh, you know what? I had the Clippers winning this series from the beginning, and I still got the Clippers winning this series, you know, yeah. as well. So um, Paul George starting to look like he's getting a little groove, too. You know, that playoff P, he started to shrug that off. You know, he's starting to play. And then you got playoff Rondo, he always coming to play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and then Kawhi has been quiet and dominant. That's what he do. Kawhi has been dominant. If you look at his numbers, a lot of people want to, he been doing good, you know? So. I like Kawhi. Quiet guy. I love, yeah, I like Fun guy. A lot. Fun, Fun guy, guy. Kawhi. Uh, well, we got, uh, so what? We got this NFL coming up too, man. We got uh, Julio Jones one out. Uh yeah. Talked to Uncle Shea on the, uh, on Undisputed with last week. Told him I'm out of there, man. Uh, the June first, uh, <laughs> the June first trade uh, exception is passed. So now they are stuck with the you know the dead cap. That's what other, other teams was waiting on. Really, they didn't want to pay all that money and give a draft compensation. Right. I don't think that Atlanta is going to get a number one for him. Uh, today we seen uh, Baltimore pull out, and we seen um, somebody uh, else pull Los out. Los Angeles, the Rams. The Rams. The Rams. Yeah. So. Uh, where do you think Julio goes and for what, uh, man? What Julio, makes the most sense? 
<clears throat> Julio, unfortunately, will be going to Tennessee Titans. That's where he's going to go. And it's going to be a monster offense over there with him and A.J. Brown. Uh, it makes sense for him because it, the, still the primary focus is going to be stop the run and stop King Henry. That's going to be the primary focus when you line up. They still going to stack, stack that box. And then you got to just pick your poison. Ryan Tannehill got to be smart with the ball, which these last two seasons he has been. And then when you got two monsters on the outside, literal monsters with Julio, and then you got that young boy, AJ, now you have to pick your poison. Which way are you going to roll the, the, the coverage? And honestly, in my opinion, whichever way you roll the coverage, that's just the way he's going to go. That's just the way Ryan Tannehill going to go. I really believe that one-on-one -on -one coverage but for either one of those guys on the outside. They're going to eat. It makes sense. I don't want to see them go to Tennessee. We, we we got a rivalry with Tennessee right now, Baltimore. So I don't want to see that happen. But if you're looking at it from a schematic standpoint, football personnel, it makes sense. We're going to stack the box. We got Julio. We got AJ. And then let's work. Ryan Tannehill, don't make no mistakes. They make the most sense. Uh, the attention that Henry gets out the backfield, eight in the box. Uh, Julio hasn't faced uh, single teams in a uh, single coverage in a while. A.J. Brown on the other side, that's another uh, big piece over there, too. Uh, and it makes sense because I don't see Atlanta. I don't think Atlanta wants to trade him in the division. So I can see that as well. Uh, other teams, if they do trade him inside the division, the Redskins, I mean, the football team make a lot of uh, mm -hmm. make a lot of sense. Um they and can use another too. weapon. They don't, they, they, they don't want to trade them inside of the NFC conference. Yeah. I know we know damn well they ain't trading them into the division. No. <laughs> That'd be no, ridiculous. That'd be crazy. You get to see them twice, you'll be like, oh, hell no. Nah. I would yeah, like to yeah. see them in the jet with the Jets, though. I think the Jets make some sense. I think you got a rookie quarterback in Zach Wilson. You take some pressure off him with a number one or the go-to weapon. You got Corey mm -hmm. Davis on the other side. Uh, you added uh, uh, Tevin Coleman in the backfield, and you drafted the rookie running back from North Carolina. Offensive line been coming along. You got to make them Josh. weapons. Uh, you got to make them weapons uh, comfortable. You can't go out there and send that rookie quarterback out there like you did, Darn. You can't do that. So uh, they are already doing a better job for uh, Zach Wilson than they did for Darnold. They already doing mm -hmm. that. But you could tell by the way they draft in the end, some of the free agencies that they picked up, and 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 they, and they learn from their mistakes. They will do a better job. I don't, and it do make sense. I'm not even trying to say it don't. I think. Julio don't want to go there. Julio wants his best chance at a championship that he can get. That Atlanta, that that, that Atlanta will help him bridge to. Um, and the Jets ain't gonna get to no championship no time soon. Um, they ain't not even gonna win their division. You know what I mean? They're not gonna be close. So uh, I don't really think he's going there. Schematically, it do make sense though because you need an alpha dog over there. Corey Davis is not a true number one. So you know Julio where he might go. There. You know where he might go. Where the Raiders. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. John Gruden has shown that Wait, he'll go out there and make. They got the money for it, though. Uh, I'm not sure. Detroit got the money the for it. Need to come to Detroit. We got the money for it. Well, we tenth uh, in the cap space right now. <laughs> hey, I think Detroit tenth right now. Hey, the Lions. Uh, I, I put a video out. I said why I think the Lions should go get. A lot of people been saying no. You're rebuilding. Uh, he has a mm -hmm. cap hit. Uh. It don't make sense. Uh, you're trying to rebuild. I liked it for the Lions because I seen that the division and what our division is doing is crumbling. Aaron Rodgers went out. Uh, Devontae Adams don't know if you want to play with, with uh, Jordan Love. And the other receivers set out of OTAs. And Minnesota got issues. Minnesota not happy. Uh, I mean, Kirk Cousins. And uh, Chicago don't have offensive line. They ain't never been able to develop a quarterback. And uh, – and uh, Allen Robinson went out. So I, I looked at it and said, well, hey, you, I know you're rebuilding, but you look at your surroundings and shit, you might be in the same situation as Washington. Now, you don't want to be like Washington, be caught with your pants down when you do get there. Now, you just got that defense. You can't move the ball offensively. But I'd rather have an offense than no defense. And I don't think the defense is that far behind. I think the defense has some players, and I think a new scheme and a new coach and a new culture probably will do for them. Uh, offense is more uh, – the offense is better than what we think. Especially with the girly news, he could be signing. He could, taking his physical. I think he's taking his physical, physical today and tomorrow. Uh, today and tomorrow, uh, offensive line there, run game there, tight end there. Uh, Tyrell Williams is a good second to third option. You draft the Amara St. Brown. The energy here in Detroit is good. I know Julio at first glance to look at that shit and be like, "Hey, man, what the fuck is Detroit?" But with Calvin Johnson coming back in the fold, Calvin Johnson back in good graces with Detroit. He has little ties with Calvin Johnson. They had a little bit of a comparison him from out of college. He worked mm -hmm. with him at uh, when uh, Calvin would go back to Georgia. Uh, 
And I think once he looks at the landscape of this and he'll be like, well, shit, man, it kind of does make sense. You know what I'm saying? Right. I do kind of have a chance here with Aaron Rodgers leaving the division and then golf, you know what I'm saying? With a clean pocket, top five quarterback and accuracy when the pocket's clean. So let's see what, you know, I would boy, like the Lions to do it. It's a long boy, shot. Where but... you come with them stats at, boy? Hey, right. man, you know how I am. Come on now. Yes, come sir. on now. That boy ah. say he's top five on a pocket clean. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. We do our homework clean, on this side of town. Do. You hear yes, me? Sir. We do our homework over here. You hear yes, me? Sir. We, Come on now, talk to in, me. me. Keep on going. Let's talk to them. Teach them a little something. If you are, if y'all like gonna watch first of the party, gonna learn something. That's for sure. You That's for me? sure. Like I said, with that run <laughs> game, that's something he used to. Uh, Gurley. Let's look at Gurley and the sign in there, man. Like the Lions with Gurley, man. Uh, everybody Gurley looking at his be, decline. He gotta be healthy. He gotta be healthy though. I don't think that's all, man. Remember with golf? Remember I told you with golf? Uh, they lost a lot. 2018, they had the offensive line of the year. You know, so they was voted the offensive line of the year. They lost John Sullivan. They lost uh, uh, Blythe or something like that to a uh, trade. They lost a couple of offensive linemen. They lost uh, Roger Saffold to uh, the Titans in free agency. So then the offensive line goes from worst to first. It was, it was you know, documented. The offensive line was horrible. You took away Brandon Cooks, the deep threat. So now it's eight in the box. And the offensive line ain't good. So he so Gurley goes from five yards of carry to 3.5. Then he leaves, he leaves there and goes to Atlanta, where they offensive line over. They can't even keep Aaron Matt Ryan up. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So he he went from bad offensive line to bad offensive line. He still had 3.5 yards per carry and nine touchdowns last year with a little under 700 yards rushing. So let's see what he do under a good offensive line. So we a lot of people say, well, you got Jamal Williams and you got Swift. Well, all three of those guys are good pass catching running backs. Uh, Dan Campbell coming from New Orleans, where um they passed it to Kamara out the backfield. Uh Jamal Williams was a good receiver out the back from Green Bay, and we see him Swift. So I, think the I mean we didn't talk about is Julio going to Green Bay because that's what we don't want to see. That's the very mm-hmm. last place we we as Lions fan. Uh, want to see but honestly that's a place that makes sense you already have a top three receiver over there in Devontae Adams in my opinion if you watch the tape the best route runner in the NFL currently right now I would not man up Devontae Adams it will get bad Aaron Rodgers never once said he chooses his words very carefully when you watch Aaron Rodgers interviews he says he threw a monkey wrench in their plan I came out and, and played with my hair on fire, scorched earth tour. He never once said, I will not play for this organization. All his actions has been showing that, but he never said it. My thing is this, if Green Bay is, if they want Aaron Rodgers, if you really, really want Aaron Rodgers, what do you do? You get on the phone with Atlanta and you don't get off until you get that guy in green and gold. That's what you do. You don't get off the phone space. until, man, you do not get off the phone <laughs> You don't get off the fucking phone, bro. You don't get off the phone until you get Julio Jones with Devontae Adams over there. Mind you, Aaron Rodgers ain't happy right now. So first of all, if anybody knows about Aaron Rodgers, let's give you all a little history. Aaron Rodgers goes to OTAs. OTAs are not mandatory. They're they're not, especially for guys like Aaron Rodgers. Not MVPs. He goes to OTAs. Not only was he not an OTA, but the top five pass catchers, the top five receivers did not show up to OTAs as an action of showing solidarity that, hey, we going with Rodgers. We going with our guy. Y'all need to make that right. And then you lost your top running back last year, Aaron Jones. You didn't even attempt to bring him back. You think Aaron Rodgers happy about that? He not. But you can fix it if you find some type of way to get Julio Jones and that horrendous contract that he got that contract is stupid big but like you said they don't have no cap space that's why the lions lions knowing that okay to make green to make aaron Rodgers happy uh they might get on the phone and try to bring in the uh julio jones well that's where the lions play a little defense you play defense you keep him out the you keep aaron Rodgers on his path to leaving and you keep them from getting julio jones and which will keep him so you know what i'm saying it makes sense you know what I'm saying? Like I said, for the Lions to go out there and make that move, but uh, a lot of people in Detroit don't think it's a good move. A lot of people a lot of, a think lot of that it's uh, think stupid anything, to do that when you, when you rebuild. A lot, so. a lot of people think anything that the Lions do is a bad move. And I want to say this too, which uh, they have every right to feel that way. I've been a Lions fan for 30 years and they have done nothing for me. But one thing that I've, I've talked about, one thing that 
that you have to be honest with yourself with. You got to get this new regime a chance if you're still a Lions fan. Now, if you're not mm-hmm. a Lions, fan, I'm not talking to you. But if you're a Lions fan or you teetering or you you don't know, you got to get us. You got to get them regime. You got to give them a chance. We got a new GM, new head coach. Uh, the owner is talking differently. You know, you got to get these guys some chances. And first of all, their track record as far as the black man GM, his track record is good. Cleveland Browns, Los Angeles Rams, he built both of those teams up. He, oh, that he was uh, Dorsey. Dorsey did. He that. helped. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So my thing is this: you got to get them chances, man. You got to give them a chance. Yeah. Uh, what else we they got? They did man? nothing wrong. They did nothing. Uh, they did nothing to us yet. <laughs> not yet. Not they yet. They didn't do nothing so to us a, yet. <laughs> this is a clean pocket. So. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, yes, sir. I, 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 even, if, even if the Lions don't go after uh, Julio, the other move I could see them doing is uh, Golden Tate bringing him back. He a free agent. Uh, that moves the needle a bit in Detroit. Uh, get you another receiver, uh, especially with the fan base. He left on good terms. He was very productive here in Detroit. Uh, and he he, he seems players. like a player that's uh, that fits golf, that Rams type of uh, crossing patterns, screens, uh, he, things he, of that nature. He can, he can he can hit older Cooper Cup. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. He Cooper. He, he could be his Cooper. Yeah. So I can see that type of move, uh, and I think it makes it moves the needle, especially with uh, Calvin back in the fold too. Him and Golden had a uh, him and Golden was a. Uh, was solid together, you know. They was, you know, they was straight. Well, we but got. uh, other than that, I man, we uh, I think we should be straight now. Nah, we ain't tapped in on everything. We got that Floyd Paul fight this weekend. Ocho he fighting really, on the undercard. What's up, man? Is. You got Floyd? He fighting a real. He fighting a real boxer too. And I just heard that Tyrone Wheatley posted. Not Tyrone Wheatley. Uh, uh, Tyrone. Uh, Ty Woodley. Woodley. Ty Woodley. I'm sorry. Yeah, Woodley. I'm sorry. He supposed to be fighting um, Baby uh, Paul. Yeah, baby, like, man, what is going on? What is going on, man? They making a mockery of boxing, man. It's a sport that I truly love. Uh, it's, it's it's my top three sports. I love boxing. I'm a real boxing fan. And I want to see real boxers that train versus real boxers that train. I'm tired of these celebrities, man. They just, you know, they're making a mockery. I don't want to see no more old people fight old people. Uh, you know, no more Roy Jones and Tyson and that, bro. I, I'm not a big fan of that. You know, Floyd, you are, you are legendary. To me, Floyd is the best boxer of all time. I said it. I said it. Y'all can kill me in the comments. I said it. I think he, I think he's the greatest boxer of all time. For you to just step in the ring with somebody like that, man, you just money hungry and you got enough money, bro. Like, I, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's good it's, hustle. It's, generational wealth, man. Good hustle. Yeah, man. He got that two times, three times over, though. You just I'm not mad at your, it, though. I, I know you're not. I am. <laughs> the reason I am why I'm someone, not mad is because bro, of the sport you, of boxing. You're undefeated, bro. You're, yeah. you're undefeated, bro. It, it, anything can happen, man. It's boxing, bro. It is yeah. boxing. It is not football. It's not basketball. It is not baseball. It's boxing. One punch will put your ass on the canvas. And then everybody going to be like, what the fuck? We didn't think that was going to happen. Imagine the one person that's going to put $100, $1,000 on, on Paul. And if he hit. Come on, man. And it just don't make sense to me, man. You, you, It's disrespectful to the game of boxing, man. If you really love boxing, if you say you really put your blood, sweat, and tears into it, you wouldn't even be... Uh, Man, you wouldn't even be in conversations with no clown like that. You could have kept it social media and, and, and moved on, man. But, but I think I think this is the testament. The I think this is for uh, the sport of boxing. I think this is this is payback to them because of the the, the rankings that you have. The best don't fight the best, so True. it's easy to make a mockery out of when it comes to money because they they generate. Uh, they are going off, they're going off of money. And sales in boxing, they all they all go off of what makes the most sense and what makes the most sense. So when they when they say that, you know, what I'm saying it leaves room for Triller to come in and do these celebrity game fights because you motherfuckers go off the dollar anyway. So we go use this YouTube star, and they, and they're doing a hell of a job. They're doing a hell of a job with their marketing, man. And I think it's exciting because of the fact that we sitting up here watching these great boxers fight guys that we don't even fucking know. We paying for pay-per-views where these guys, Canelo fight, Liam Smiths, and shit like that. And we're like, who the fuck is this guy? Right. We paying $60, $70 for these pay-per-views, and we don't know who fight, the big fighter. So now we get these celebrity matches where it's giving us some entertainment. 50-50 fights. That's 50 all fights. it is, bro. It's just Paul versus celebrities in boxing? Like, these guys fighting these celebrities in boxing or other athletes are more exciting than the big fights. Like, they're getting, they're getting, all, the, they're getting all the attention. So until That's boxing fix this shit and give it one belt for one weight class and make the best fight the best like UFC, keep this shit going on and keep making a mockery of this sport until this sport get off its ass and fix this shit, man. Just like we got this, this uh, too, 
this this yeah. Joshua and uh, Wilder and, and Fury situation. It's yeah. too many fucking belts. It it's is. too many belts. Well, I'm the champion so here it? in England. Well, I'm the champion in America. Like what, what the is fuck? It, three belts per weight class now. Man, it's Ain't four it? to five got... to six, seven different belts in a weight class. Because I thought it, because I thought it was WBO, WBC, and like WB, WBA, WBA, WBF, IBF, uh, yeah, IBA, IBA Ring Magazine. It, 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 champ. Wait, they just keep and, making and belts, the, bro. And I and I and I'm gonna always be on the side of boxing when it comes to boxing and it comes to UFC. I'm gonna always lean toward boxing. That's just who I am as a person. But mm-hmm. man, you cannot deny. The fact that UFC, if you that guy and I'm that guy and we even close in weight, we're going to fight. We're going to fight, bang. man. We're going to fight. Dana, 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 like, hey, he instigating. He pushing it forward. And that's the thing, man. We got too many voices in boxing. You got the promoter. You got the fighters. And let me tell you all something, too. For all the fans out there that be talking about the fighters, I just need you to do yourself a favor and do a little bit of homework. These fighters ain't, scared to, ain't afraid to fight each other, man. It's politics and it's money. It's politics and money that's stopping these guys from fighting. Man, they train all year long. These guys are some of the most confident men walking the world, this, this earth. They ain't afraid of anybody, bro. They want mm-hmm. the smoke. They want the smoke, man. These professional boxers, they, all they do is buy jewelry, buy clothes, and box. That's it. So Everybody they want wants the smoke, smoke, man. Everybody Except wants for, the smoke. Uh, Garcia. Don't do, Ryan. Don't do that. Don't do you that. don't want the smoke. Don't do that. Ryan, Ryan a little scared of Haney, though, ain't he? He's scared of Haney. <laughs> He's scared of Haney. He's a little Haney scared of Haney, bro. He oh, Haney, Haney doing the best he can, bro. He, he want him bad. But for the majority of the fight, 99% of the fighters, man, they ain't afraid to fight nobody, mm-hmm. man. They're not afraid to fight nobody. But when it comes to the politics and the money, A side, B side, the boxer looking like, shit, I got way more to lose if I fight this guy. And that's what's stopping fights. Like right now, Triple G, he holding out, thinking he going to get one more shot at Canelo. Instead of taking a fight, and making it a, making another big fight. You he know? signed he signed a double he signed a two fight deal with Murata, uh the Japanese guy. They go fight uh here in the summer and then in uh um uh, New Year's Eve or something like that. He's hoping to get those belts and uh and win that fight to get uh, a rematch with Canelo because Canelo running out of people to fight. So now he started to say, yeah, I'll try to fight Triple G hey, again. I want to say this too. Me and you both know better. Let's not even put that narrative out there. Canelo not running out of people to fight. Canelo ducking the smoke at 160. Yes, sir. That's what it is. Now you ran out of people to fight at 168. I give you that. I am a big Canelo fan. Big Canelo fan. That is my guy right now. Him and Errol Spence Jr. They're my two favorite boxers. I'm telling you right now, Canelo doing he he ducking the smoke at 160, bro. Because yeah. that's where the that's where the sum of the competition is at. That's where the killers are at. Go fight them guys. But it is what it is. I'm very happy that my dog Errol Spence get to fight a legend in Pacquiao. Um, I, I think he got out. I'm telling bold prediction first of the party. Errol Spence will not Pacquiao out in the eighth round. Mm. In the eighth round, KO. Because my thing is this, Pacquiao only know how to fight one way. He want to walk forward and Errol too big for him. He going to walk forward too. So now we got we got two bulls. And, my I think, young, and young boy, he fundamentally sound, man. I think, I think I think I don't think I don't think I don't think I don't think Pacquiao. I don't think he's taking one of them. I don't think I don't think he gonna be able to withstand the pressure. I don't think he'll be able to withstand the size. I know we seen him back in in his uh prime, uh mm-hmm. beat bigger fighters and Cotto De La Hoya, but those guys were uh Mayweather uh Mayweather rejects, Mayweather already beat them guys, they're already beaten mentally. Those are undefeated fighters or or legends that don't lose oftenly and got shut out by Floyd or be bad. So they were beaten already. Um, knockout. I could see a knockout. I could uh, see Spence I, I knocking him out. And man. I think that'll finally... What round you got, I, man? Huh? Get the people to round. What round you got? Get the people to round. I gave him round eight, man. He gonna walk that man down around at round eight. Knockout. I'm calling. It's gonna be similar to uh, Canelo and Amir Khan. <laughs> that bad. Damn. What round you got it in? I got it going six. I got it going six. I think the body punching, I think the boxing, I think the power That's and the spins, is. I think it's Man, just too much. Uh, Pacquiao ain't got hitting the body that hard in a long time. And he ain't been see, hitting the face be... that hard since uh, Marquez. And see, my thing, yeah, yeah, right. 
And see, my thing is this, bro. He better than Keith Thurman, bro. Earl Spence is. So it's not going to people, – people keep thinking about, oh, no, nah, man. This a whole different guy right here, man. Yeah. It's a whole different guy, man. And I'm going to tell you right now, if Packy, if if Earl Spence go out and beat Pacquiao, in my book, I'm putting him over T.O. Fimo. He will be the number one pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world in my book. He, I'm putting him over Bud. I'm putting him way over Bud. I'm putting him over uh, T.O. Fimo. He going over Tank. He gonna be the pound for pound number one fighter in the world in my book. He over what about Canelo? Shit, I forgot about Canelo. Yeah, that's the number one fighter in the world, right? No, now. I'm no, no, no. I'm still going Earl because Earl fighting competition. He fighting the best that's out there. Canelo not. Thank Canelo you. not. So I'm still Thank going you. with Earl, bro. I'm going Thank with the, I'm going with the guy who want to fight the best. So yeah, I'm going with Earl Steele. Canelo I number two. I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. I think we did it again, Ruth. I think we man, had another we good show. Hey, shout out to uh, Coach K, man. He retiring. He stepping oh, down, man. man. Legendary Coach K at Duke, man. Hey, look, and I think it was good that he doing that. Roy Williams stepped down a year or two ago, and then here come Coach K. You know, rivals in the college basketball. Hey, man, and and, and Duke, they got they they missing the legend, man. They missing the legend. So we're gonna see who they're gonna bring in next uh, for UNC and and uh, for Duke. We gonna we gonna see who next. Um, I think. Yeah, we we'll see who next. We'll see who next, man. That's legendary. Yeah, I think they said John Shire go uh take over for uh Coach K. For he do he the coach in the waiting. So I oh, think uh, I remember John Shire played for Duke. Uh we played with uh Kennard and um and uh who else was over there? Uh Grayson Allen. He played in that era. So uh um shout out to Coach K. Uh shout out to uh Matt Barnes, Steven Jackson, and Stephen A. Smith. Uh <laughs> Tearing Kwame Brown, uh, soft ass up. I'm a, uh, I, I gotta take that back, man. Uh, like I, like uh, Stephen A. said, everything they did back, was uh, was uh, professional. It wasn't uh, attacking him personally. Uh, the conversation was about NBA bust, uh, and he just happens to be one of those busts. And there's yeah, nobody's he, fault. He a bust. It was he nobody's bust, fault, but his. Uh, he turned into talking about Becky with the good hair and she chose about Matt Barnes, who wasn't even saying nothing. Uh, Steven Jackson, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Those guys was talking about his personal, I mean, his, his professional life. He started getting personal. Uh, I just feel like if you don't want to be called a bum or a bus, work on your motherfucking game. That ain't nobody fault but yours, bro. You dropping, fumbling passes. You can't finish around the rim. You airballing layups. Your bum ass can't even play in the big three. I'm Get it together. Opposite, man. I'm gonna take the opposite, man. I'm gonna go with Kwame on this. Uh, Stephen A. He tend to um, put down people in our community. I'm big on the black community, man. And one thing I ain't gonna do, I'm not gonna trash nobody. If I feel like you suck, I say it. I'm gonna just say it. You know, I ain't no professional athlete. I ain't go far. You know, if I feel mm -hmm. like you suck, I'm gonna suck. I ain't gonna harp on you. I'm gonna say you suck. I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna give my stats and my points. And there's nothing wrong with that. As an analyst and you an analyst, I try to take this job. I try to take what we do professionally, just like Stephen A. But Stephen A. He tends to continuously go on. You know what I'm saying? He continues to ride people. Ride people. Like, dude, you're not even the best at your job. You just a black guy that the black community accept and you entertain it. That's really about it, dog. You're not the best at your job. Max low key be fucking you up on that show sometimes. I'm just gonna be keeping it real. And I love Stephen A, bro. I'm just being honest. Like, dude, I ain't tearing down nobody in the black community. And I don't commend or condone anybody who who gonna tear somebody down in the black community. What they did, they allowed uh, uh Jenny Buss and other people, Rachel Nichols, to check to to uh lead the conversation. You allow you 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 knew that what they was doing. You could have been a mature grown man about it and move that conversation to the side. Just because you bring up a conversation don't mean I gotta go with it. But that's just my take on it, man. I'm I'm rocking with Kwame on this one, dog. Becky with the good hair be on bullshit, man. That's just my opinion though, man. That's well, my hey, and and the, and, the, and the rebuttal to your con you know the, what you said, it was other busts and people that was making fun of other bums in the NBA. And uh and there's people and, that's and, worse and, than Kwame Brown. Huh? Darko Milicic. It's people Darko. worse than Kwame Brown. Darko Milicic. Yeah, but look, I look at it like this. Remember Shaq and the Fool? JaVale McGee was on there every fucking week. Yeah, and he spoke up. Either, man. He spoke up. He spoke up about this. I ain't no bum. And he worked on his game and he won championships. Yeah. Now he ain't being talked about no more. Kwame, you got to put the work in on the floor, bro. You got to put that work in. You chose to that. play in the NBA. That's a public uh, uh, public uh, sport. Me and you, this is what we doing. He putting his talents out there for me and you to judge. Bro, if you don't want to be called a bum or a bust, 
take your big ass to the gym and learn how to throw a hook, bro. That's true. Learn how to true. box out, bro. My, we can't. Th- this generation is soft. We ain't seen no, and, go after Team Tebow. They go after Darko <laughs> every chance. He, I go out to Darko. Everybody go out to Darko Milicic. Stephen A. Right. Darko Milicic. You know what I'm saying? This but ain't nothing new. Too. This is something Stephen that they've a. been doing. Yeah, but Stephen A. also be the one too that's to be having a hard time taking criticism. He need a whole full two three minute rant before he start first first take. But but to get what he got to get out too. My thing is this: you got to be transparent. You got to at least be consistent. Don't throw it out there if you can't take it back. For example, I say certain people suck on my show, and then I bring up stats and reasons why. If somebody came on here and said first of the party suck, and they gave me reasons why, I'd take it as constructive criticism. I wouldn't get all of my feelings about it. Stephen A is the type of man to get in his feelings. Matt Barnes is too. Now, I respect for Stephen Jack, because I, I, I actually like the way Stephen Jack handled it. He said what he had to say, he bagged up off of it, and he apologized like a grown man should. Them other two guys, though, man, Hey, look, they ain't handled it the right way. You got to go back opinion, to Mark, Matt Barnes, though. Matt Barnes never said nothing. He just tapped off. So, yeah, it is fuck you. It is fuck you. Now, Gilbert Arenas? I don't, yeah, Gilbert was, you know, Gilbert was talking about, he played, they played with him. I know, you know what I'm saying? Gil- they played Gil- with this Gil- guy, man. So Gilbert I mean, just somebody, Gilbert do a lot of talking to, man. Gilbert do a lot of talking to, but, hey, man, I think we finished it out, man. Yeah, I, yeah it's good? over, man. It's over with. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of the party, man. First of the party nation. The party. Please like, comment, subscribe, Don't share. We got Facebook, like, comment, Twitter. Subscribe. Please, man, man. We everywhere, like. man. We everywhere, man. Please, man. Trying. Please. Hey, Love wash your feet too, man. Wash our feet. I tell you all the wash time. Don't let them cut your water off and you ain't wash your feet yet. <laughs> <laughs> first of the party, man. We out. Hey, we out of here. Yes, sir. Big stats. Big stats. Big stats. Big stats.